And as you can see, all those people moving through the gates like ants down there are just chugging money into our bank account. We're now up to 75,000. This is insane. We've only just started this city. It is tiny and it is making huge, terrifying quantities of money. Dear God. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit and today we're playing City Skylines, the ultimate city building game. Trust me, this is the best city building game in existence. It's fantastic. It's majestic. And today, are we going to be be building a city? No, no we're not. We're going to be playing City Skylines in a way which the developers definitely didn't intend. We're going to be throwing all of the city building rules out of the window and instead creating the weirdest city design in existence. But most importantly we're going to be creating a dystopian hellscape of a city where our local population is taxed into oblivion. It will cost an average pedestrian their entire life savings just to walk across the street. That is how heavily we're going to be taxing them and how we're going to be exploiting city skylines today? Well, there's only one way to find out. So make sure you sat back, relaxed, you have a nice warm cup of tea in hand, because we're about to throw ourselves into a brand new game. So welcome to City Skylines, an absolutely beautiful game where naturally we need to create a city on uh, any of these maps will do. We're going to go for the Eden Valley map. What's going to be the name of our glorious city? It's going to be called Disneyland 2, ladies and gentlemen. Now, of course, naming a city Disneyland 2 is going to cause a lot of confusion. For a start, you're going to be wondering why on earth are we calling a city Disneyland 2? The reasoning is simple. Just like Disneyland, everything is going to be extremely expensive and overpriced, and that's how we're going to become filthy, filthy, filthy rich. So it's time to actually get settled into this glorious brand new utopia. Sorry, I mean dystopia. As we introduce many happy new families in what will effectively become a city which will be worse than hell itself, which honestly is quite an achievement. Right, hello and welcome to Disneyland 2, ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen. At the moment, you're probably looking at the city and thinking, what on earth have you created, Spiff? And uh, you'd be right to question my ultimate design, because this is complete and utter madness. What you're seeing in front of you is a city layout that makes absolutely no sense. You see, over here on the left-hand side of our city, we have a giant residential area, and on the right, we have commercial and industry. However, these two areas are separated by a one-way road, meaning that this side can never interact with this side. It's absolute chaos ladies and gentlemen, but the thing is, it actually just works in terms of a city design. Because in order to make Disneyland prosper, we only need one thing, an overly priced park. Now sadly, we can't actually build a park until we have 1,400 people living in our city, which is exactly why we've built this giant monolithic residential area over here, which people are going to start slowly moving into. Look, we already have our first 178 visitors. Little do they know that once they arrive, there is absolutely no escape. And here they come. All of our lovely tax-paying residents have finally rocked up to the city and moved into all of their homes. Sadly, of course, this is a one-way track in and out of the city, meaning uh, once they arrive, they can never leave. So welcome to your final glorious resting place. Now, we only need to reach a population of, I think it's uh, 440, and then we unlock taxes. And as soon as we unlock taxes, we can immediately slash the residential taxation to get as many people into our city as possible. And this is actually all that matters. So we're going to crank down the low density residential tax. Look at that, we only charge 1% tax. Aren't I such a great guy? There we go, fantastic. Now of course in order to unlock parks we're going to need 1,400 people living here, which is going to take a little bit of a jump, but trust me we can do it. Especially now that we lower taxation to go as low as it possibly can. We might be losing money at the moment, but don't worry ladies and gentlemen, that doesn't matter. And there we go, we've achieved a population of 900, meaning we've unlocked the title of Worthy Village. This doesn't really give us much to mess about with beyond actually just being able to take out more loans. But at the same time, we can designate this entire area to be residential, which I suppose is nice. But we can't really enact any useful policies here. So for the time being, it's just going to be a fantastic residential dump. Now, one thing we do need are even more people living here. So naturally, I'm going to be filling up this space with even more locations for prime residential real estate. And we'll also be building a school because a school will probably increase the land value of this area, which is honestly kind of important. We need more people living here, so a school makes perfect sense. So now that we have a school, suddenly the city's starting to fill up and we're about to achieve a population of 1,400. This is going to be it, because as soon as we achieve this population cap, the entire game breaks down. We're just 100 people away, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be it. Yes, there we go. Tiny town achieved. We can now build parks. So why are parks so important? Well, at the end of the day, City Skylines is a city building game 
game where you have to logistically manage a city. We have a population living over here and we have shops and industry over here. Citizens need to go to shops to buy goods and they need to go to industry to work their actual jobs. So citizens want to commute from Sheffield Square over to this area here where all of the jobs and products are. But currently there is no way to actually gain access to it because we only have a one-way road into the city and out of the city and the two don't connect. Well, what if we created a way for citizens to cross from here to over here but we could make money off of it? Because at the end of the day the residents of Disneyland 2 are an infinite source of wealth and that's where parks come into the picture. All we need to do is designate a brand new district which is going to be a park area ladies and gentlemen and we'll paint this entire area to be part of one giant park. There we go. What's it going to be called? Elizabeth Gardens? No, 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 no. This is the toll bridge ladies and gentlemen. A park where visitors are going to have money physically sucked out of their very being. So what we're going to do is set up a fantastic park. In order to actually have a park we're going to need a park main gate which we're going to slam down right about here and this unlocks all of the other necessary park buildings. Now of course now that we have a park main gate the most important actions of a park can now begin. Most importantly the ticketing of any visitors. Basically anyone who walks through this gate here is immediately charged $20. But what if we could actually charge them even more? Well luckily we can. So what we're going to do is actually build ourselves a lovely brand new dirt road right here ladies and gentlemen that goes to about here and then we're going to set ourselves up a little park side gate. This bad boy costs $2,000 to construct but every time a visitor walks through the park side gate they are immediately billed. Now doesn't that sound interesting? Now what I'll do is I'll build yet another dirt road here and connect up yet another glorious park side gate and you can probably start seeing what's actually happening now at the moment. What we're creating here ladies and gentlemen is a death maze where the only way to get in and out of the park is to walk through these absolutely glorious side gates. So bam this is the final exit gate of our park. The death maze has been constructed. This death maze is absolutely horrible. The way it works is pretty simple. So what happens is people basically arrive at the park and they get charged $20 for every gate they go through. But how many gates do we have? Well in total to walk through this entire stretch of grounds, visitors cross through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 gates in total. And every time they walk through these gates they get charged $20. Meaning in total to cross from this side of the park to over here it is going to cost someone $300. But remember ladies and gentlemen if you live in this area of the city and you need a job you have to work over here. Meaning you have to spend $300 every day commuting to work. But then what happens once you finish your day at work? Well you've got to commute all the way back and that's going to cost you another $300. But then you get home and remember you need to go shopping for food. Well guess what? You can go right back out to the shops and back again. A citizen who does this trip four times a day is going to be spending a glorious $1,200 walking back and forth between this maze of taxation and death. And oh my goodness is it not glorious. So ladies and gentlemen we're just going to open our glorious park up for business and you're going to immediately notice people are going to start flocking towards it. The reasoning is simple. They want to get to jobs. And look here's our first visitor now. It's Dexter Graham. He's just paid us $40 by walking through these two gates. Oh no. Make that 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 240, 260 and there we go. It's it's fantastic. Absolutely glorious. Oh we make so much money. So that one man walked all the way through and gave us a nice quantity of cash. But at the end of the day we're going to be needing more people doing more trips and that's exactly what we're going to be getting. So we can actually see that in total we've had 67 visitors and we've made $660 and most of the visitors are kind of just walking their way through the maze at the moment mostly parking up cars and they're getting on with their business and immediately you'll notice we're starting to make $1,000 a week despite the fact that our taxation's down at the lowest. Now you will notice the parks can actually level up and in order for a park to level up parks need to achieve a level of entertainment and achieving that level of entertainment is actually very important. So in order to actually level this bad boy up what we're going to do is build ourselves a lovely park cafe. That's right visitors to the park can now visit the cafe and spend some money. At the same time we can also include some kind of park plaza here in the middle for visitors. There we go and with that the park has now just leveled up to tier 2. A tier 2 park allows us to charge an additional four dollars on the ticket price. This is fantastic but trust me it's going to be oh so much better. Uh, so fast forward some time and uh, we're making a lot of money and as you can see people are literally just flooding into the park at the moment. Huge quantities of foot traffic although apparently it's resulting in a giant crime wave around about the Central Park Plaza. I have no idea what's
what's going on and who's committing crimes in the one cafe that we have in the park, but apparently it's happening. The same time I set up this uh, second route here so that people could gain faster access to all of the shops on the southern side of things, and that appears to have absolutely skyrocketed our weekly income. As you can see, we are now making around about 10,000 a week just off of parks. This is insanity. It is completely and utterly stupid. We only have 3,200 people in our town. We shouldn't be able to make this much money. But the reason we're able to do so is because citizens in transit have an infinite quantity of cash. They don't have an upper budget on the quantity that they can spend. Meaning every time they walk for a gate, money will just appear out of thin air to cover the cost of them moving through it. Now, how's our park doing? Well, we've had enough visitors to actually upgrade to the next level, so it's time for us to spam out the necessary entertainment facilities in order to actually reach there. So, bam, we're going to add in some toilets. We're going to add in an information booth. We can even add in ourselves a giant chessboard. We can even add in, you guessed it, yet another cafe. And there we go. That's upgraded the park to level three. Fantastic stuff, meaning the ticket price has just been raised from $24 to $30. And as you can see, all those people moving through the gates like ants down there are just chugging money into our bank account. We're now up to 75000 This is insane. We've only just started this city. It is tiny and it is making huge, terrifying quantities of money. Dear God. Okay, but the thing is it gets better because as of course the game says, we've just unlocked gazebos. Gazebos are simple. They cost a fair amount of money, but they don't take up much space. Meaning if we spam the ever-living heck out of them, we can power level the entertainment rating of this park into the stratosphere. Every single stretch of land is going to have a gazebo and it is going to work. So there we have it. Bam! Park level 4 immediately unlocked. Or because we spam down a gazillion gazebos. That means the price instantaneously rises up to $34 and the money keeps on flowing in. But wait, there's more. As soon as we have 10,000 visitors in the park, we can level up to the next tier. And we're now going to also add in the legendary climbing frame, ladies and gentlemen. My goodness, what a building. And we'll also top it off by adding in, you guessed it, even more gazebos. Gazebos everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Just non-stop gazeboing. Everyone will have a gazebo. Alright, what's the entertainment value up to? Entertainment value is just ever so slightly shy of the level up, but we've just passed the visitor mark. As you can see, we have 150 grand in the bank, so uh, honestly, we can just place down whatever we like. There is no limit to what we can create. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot a dirt road off in this direction, and then just fill this bad boy up with climbing frames. There we go, more climbing frames. And there we go, we did it. It's a level five park. We can now build trampolines. So we're gonna build a trampoline park, of course, why not? But most importantly, we've now achieved level five, meaning that this park right here can start charging people $40 for every gate that they go through. Charging $40 a gate is absolutely fantastic for one very simple reason. We can now recalculate how much it costs someone to go from one side of the park to the other. So in order to exit the park from top to bottom, it actually costs you now $400, uh, which is fantastic. But in order to exit out of the top, it's going to actually cost you $600 to leave the park out of the top. And that's every time you take a trip through the park. This is ridiculous. It's so much money. It's amazing. Do you love the outdoors? Do you love the smell of fresh air and relaxation? Do you like visiting parks? And do you really, really like walking? Then come to Disneyland 2 today, the premier city for everyone who likes parks. The only city to feature a zero tax policy. It's truly majestic. We 100% guarantee you that the parks are also very affordable and 100% won't leave you cripplingly financially bankrupt. But don't take my word for it. Why, simply take a look at the likes on this video. Each like on this video is a sign of one happy customer who loved their visit to our parks. And if you want a more in-depth review, scroll down to the comment section where you'll see hundreds of thousands of real-world reviews of the glorious Disneyland Park. I promise that every single comment on this video is 100% not made by a Spivco bot account. Spivco bots get to work, you know what to do. Anyway, let's get back into Disneyland, a world of joy, magic, and money. Now, the thing is, this battery setup here is perfect, and we don't actually want to change it at all. This is effectively a closed-loop system, we can leave it alone, and it will continue generating us an incredible amount of money until the end of the game. The only way we can actually improve this is if we were to actually upgrade this into high-density residential, which is something we can't do until our city's a bit larger. So what we're going to do is basically build an exact mirror of this setup just on the other side of the road. Now, the uh, lower belt section here, which we've set up, is doing great, of course. 
course, uh, naturally there's immense crime happening. No idea why there's crime happening at the gazebos, but apparently hundreds of children are being held at gunpoint for the dogecoin that their parents gave them was pocket money, so uh, yeah, crime rate's pretty high. I don't really think we have a way of fighting crime either, as none of the police officers really seem to want to walk through the toll booths of death. Uh, now, one of the issues is that none of the hearses can actually go through our parks, uh, which means there are giant quantities of dead bodies kind of piling up. However, we can deal with all of the dead bodies piling up by simply turning the building on and off again, and this resets the problem of a dead body actually waiting to be transported. You can also technically do the same to stop any high issues of crime rate affecting your gazebos, but considering we have so many issues with rubbish piling up, I realize I need to probably reform the setup that we have going on here, because whilst we're able to make huge amounts of money and we're about to cross into the threshold of us having 1 million, there definitely has to be a better setup than this. I mean, sure, every good Disneyland needs at least a few dead bodies lying around, but we currently have almost 50 dead corpses lying all over the city, which is a pretty bad look for business. Luckily, because we own every other business in the world, we can just pump out propaganda so that nobody notices, but still, dead bodies can't pay taxes, which means they're bad for business. So let's try and build the ultimate park setup, which solves all of these frustrating problems. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to a brand new city. That's right, I actually decided that Disneyland 2, whilst it was making money, it wasn't actually in an optimal setup, and I couldn't work out why for the life of me, but then it hit me. The reasons why our setup wasn't working were that basically our lovely little pedestrians were actually teleporting to their destination, and the reason this happens is because the game has a calculation. If a person is going to get from point A to point B, and there is a direct route, they will take that direct route, unless that direct route is going to take too long. If the actual process of time passing is too much, then that pedestrian simply won't spawn in and won't go through these gates. So as fun as setting up a giant death maze is with as many hundreds of gates as possible, it's actually not efficient. Because that added distance will stop 90% of our pedestrians even spawning in. But because this is a streamlined process with only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 gates, we have a lot more pedestrians actually spawning in and going through these parks. This is a city of only 1,470 people, and yet we're making almost 22 grand a week off of parks, and they're not even in their final form. Now, how does it work? Well, basically, we have a very basic city block setup where all of our buildings are very closely packed with each other, but all of our pedestrians have to go over here to work. But also, this is where the only education buildings are. That's right, if you want an education, you're going to need to come over to this elementary school over here, and it's going to cost you $400 just across there, and then $400 to cross back, meaning it costs you $800 a day just to walk to school. Now, that's what I call efficient money-making methods. So naturally we need more than just a primary school set up, we're going to also build ourselves a high school. Now this bad boy costs 24000 but of course students are going to enroll and those students are going to have to walk to school all the way across the Taxation Park Bridge. And as we're now up to a maximum level park, our money-making is at its peak and my goodness is it incredible. Equally the cities are much more efficient because as you can see from this setup we only have one into the city and one out of the city. The residential route is the only way in and the industrial and commercial is the only way out. Basically no one is entering or exiting this city. You arrive and you stay forever and that's fine because it's a lovely place to be. Anyway we could actually do with some new residential buildings being built but we of course have limited space and we don't want to build too far away from the park's main gates so most of our brand new high density residential is going to all be placed over here. Now the reason we're building high density residential is so that we can pack in as many people as possible in a short area because we don't want to cover up too much area because covering up an area makes it likely that pedestrians won't necessarily spawn in and we only care about pedestrians spawning in. But there we go, some brand new houses, some new people can move in. Okay good, we now have 300 people actually enrolled in the high school and around about 240 in the elementary school and this is perfect. As you can see people going in and out of our parks at high speed now. The park is now making $34,000 a week which is absolutely brilliant. I mean making 30k a week off of a city with 1,700 people is insane. It is absolutely wild and it's all thanks to this one park here, the Troll Toll. Now this entire city setup is complete insanity. It fundamentally doesn't make sense. Basically we'd be operating at a giant loss if it wasn't for this one giant park here in the middle. But this giant park, my goodness does it make money. Look at how streamlined it is. People are just blitzing their way through the park and every time they walk through a gate, money is created out of thin air. Oh it's absolutely fantastic. Now the thing is, it doesn't actually matter if any 
of the industry buildings over here fail or heck if any of the shops even fail. Fundamentally that doesn't change anything for us and the reason for that is really simple. We don't actually rely off of an economy based off of tax. We just rely off of an economy of people walking through gates and if there's only two certainties in life and they are death and taxes well guess what we've dodged the taxes part and instead we've set up gate based toll charges. The only thing certain for our citizens is that they're going to have to walk for a lot of gates if they want to get anywhere in this world and those gates don't come cheap. Now we're rocketing our way up to 1 million which means naturally we're going to need to build the highest form of education possible, a university. This bad boy can house 4,500 students so uh, naturally we're just going to slam it down on over here. It is absolutely giant and will hopefully educate a few more people in our city because if we can educate them all up then we can build some giant residences. Now foot traffic through the park is going really well and the reason we're able to level up our park so quickly is actually very simple. Basically every time a pedestrian walks through a gate that counts as a visitor. So normally in a major city it actually takes a really long time to level up a park to maximum but because we're able to just speed through the process by having gates put everywhere we can actually massively increase the amount of foot traffic. Anyway this park is now making 42 grand a week which is absolutely majestic. Now we've just crossed the 1 million threshold which is absolutely majestic. That means profits are going very well for us. Right we're making almost 60,000 a week off of just this one really small park. This isn't even a perfect setup. We could probably fit in a few more toll gates if we really wanted to but just the money making potential alone is incredible. As these buildings are leveling up we're fitting more and more households into these densely packed areas and this is just going to actually be able to increase our population without actually having to have us expand anywhere which is critical if we want to keep foot traffic at a high without actually destroying the balance of the map. And welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Now uh, you'll notice we're not actually in the map of the lovely Troll Toll City and the reasoning is very simple. Uh, my entire computer crashed. That's right it blue screened. That's actually the seventh time this has happened this week so I should probably see about getting my PC fixed and sadly because I didn't enable autosave I lost the entire progress of the city. Now basically what happens when your city becomes more educated when you have that template set up is you gain a denser population that also moves back and forth faster. By the end game that sadly you guys didn't get to see the park was earning 125,000 a week just from pedestrians going back and forth. It's an insanely profitable setup to do and honestly the more tolls you're able to squeeze in the more money you can make. The fact that you're able to have a city with a population of less than 5,000 make more than a city with a population of over a million is just absolutely insane and it's entirely off of the back of a very basic simple template setup. But nonetheless I'm afraid that's all that we have in store for today's video. If you enjoyed this very cheesy way of making massive profits in city skylines then hey make sure to give the video a like and if you're new here why not consider subscribing to join our glorious community. Thank you very much for watching everyone. As always a huge thank you to each and every one of our majestic patrons and also YouTube channel members who this month are going to be funding a brand new computer. Thank you very much without your support there'd be a massive delay in videos for the next few weeks but thanks to you we actually get to bypass that. So pat yourselves on the back for keeping the content going. And heck if you sat there wanting to watch another video then look no further than this one on screen now hand chosen by myself to be absolutely perfect for you. Trust me if you enjoyed this video you're gonna love the next one. Anyway I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day and goodbye for now.